Hello, and welcome back to Podium Pop. My name is Celine. I'm here with my co-host, Gracie. We are a motorsport podcast, and this week we did not have a race to recap, neither Formula One or IndyCar, because the IndyCar season is over. Uh, so, But we do have quite a bit of news to talk about. We're going to give um, an update on everything that has gone on the last week since our last episode in both IndyCar and Formula One. So... Um, before we get started, make sure you go follow us on social mm-hmm. media. We are on TikTok. We are on Instagram. We post every Monday our episodes on Spotify and on YouTube. We're working on getting on Apple Music as well. I say that every week. We do say that every week. And one day we'll do it and you all will be shocked. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there. It's going to be this week. Next, not this coming episode, but the next episode we post, it will be on Apple. We're going to get it on Apple. And now that I've said it, like I have to do it. That's true. Yeah. Um, So let's go ahead and pop the cork, pop the bottle, and get right on into it. Let's do it. Shall we talk some IndyCar first? Yeah, let's talk some IndyCar. As you all can see, if you are viewing this on the YouTube video format, I do have my Pietro jersey on. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Pietro. I just had to put that out there. Just just your weekly shout out to Pietro. Yeah, what's new? (laughs) It has to happen. (laughs) Um, This week, Mr. Alexander Rossi celebrated his birthday. And Happy he birthday! His birthday by um, announcing his IndyCar seat. So, How long did he turn? I don't know. Thirty redacted. Okay, that's all I know. He announced that he will be driving for Ed Carpenter Racing next year. Woo! And along with that, they also announced that Christian Rasmussen will pilot the other car for Ed Carpenter. And Mr. Ed Carpenter himself will be um, driving in the five hundred. I think that's like. Our first um, mm. one-off entry for the 500 announced for yes. next year. As far, yeah. And honestly, no one's surprised by that. No. I think they're a little more surprised that he didn't announce that he's just fully taking on more of Christian Rasmussen's races. He, uh, Christian Rasmussen is doing full-time. I know. That's oh. why I think I think people are more shocked that they, he didn't announce that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I, I misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah, because he took a lot of the seats. Um, Mm -hmm. this year but yeah Alexander Rossi is moving to um, ECR it is a little interesting of a move Um, it's giving Carlos it's giving Carlos and I just think there's a lot of um, overlap with those their two stories yeah like the parallels Mm -hmm. yeah I mean there wasn't um, much Base for him to go, especially with the charter system coming into play. I'm mm-hmm. um, truly wishing him all the luck. Yeah, IndyCar is really competitive right now. Yeah, it really and is. And I think with the surge of new fans that they got this year, um, a lot more drivers are interested in driving for IndyCar, which is great. That's that's awesome. That's like the goal, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it does make it more competitive for the drivers that are already in IndyCar to keep their seat, and it also yeah. makes it more competitive. If you are switching teams, like, um, I mean, it just an example would be, um, like Callum with the, the number six car mm-hmm. and how he was obviously a fantastic driver. Um, everybody thinks that he deserves a seat in IndyCar, but they're just like, there wasn't a seat really. Yeah. Another thing with IndyCar, um, being so competitive is kind of the same thing as like the F2 championships going into F1, um, like, Louis Foster just won the Indy Next Championship, and he's even, like, said before he's not even sure if he'll be able to have an IndyCar seat next year just because it's so competitive. There's so many people who want these seats, and just not enough. Yeah. I do think, too, that there's the difference between, like, IndyCar and Formula One is, obviously, Formula One, it happens less, and I think it's just because there's more viewership for, for Formula One. Mm-hmm. But Formula One, there's less of, like, those, like, paid driver spots. Yeah. Like, obviously, it, it helps, especially when you come with a lot of sponsors. Yeah. Um, that makes a huge difference in, in Formula One. But in IndyCar, like, it's, I think, even more important that to note that a lot of the times it is a financial thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that sometimes is... It's obviously it's unfair, but that's the sport. Like that's how it happens, and um, I don't know if there's a, really a way to like change that, but yeah. it is something interesting, and that kind of makes it a little more competitive for the people that are coming in that don't have as much 
funding. Yeah. Uh, like, Linus is an example. Yeah, like, Linus sure. is a fantastic driver. He won Rookie of the Year because of the charter system. It doesn't look like he is going to have... It, he'll have a spot, I'm assuming. I just don't know where. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be Where do you in think? Car. Yeah. I don't know. There's, like, no either. Formula E? Super Formula? Yeah. It is interesting to kind of see where these people are ending up. Um, but more and more uh, announcements are being made each week. Mm-hmm. I personally am very invested in if Pietro is going to have a seat or not. Wait, I... you are? Yeah, a little. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, I keep up with it casually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But I will say that it was looking pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Oh, for a while there. Mm -hmm. Um, It's looking slightly better now, just how things have happened and how they've shaken, shaken out. Um, Mm -hmm. There's rumors that he will be going to Dale Coyne. There's rumors that he'll be staying with RLL. Personally, I prefer he stays with RLL, obviously, but I really just want him to have a seat. Also, rumors that Enzo is coming to IndyCar, too. That'd be crazy. Having two brothers on the same team... Would be really iconic. Having two brothers on different teams would be interesting as well. Um, I do wonder how they would, you know, interact with each other. The Fit to Paldi Brothers content would be going off next year. Oh my gosh. That would be so good. It'd be so good. Yeah. Um, The the vlogs. Oh, those would be great. And half the... They post them in Portuguese and in English. Mm -hmm. Uh, I watch the Portuguese ones too. (laughs) Just getting them a view. Yeah. just, Just supporting um, but I think I'm really, I'm, my fingers are crossed. I'm actually wearing the jersey and mani- manifesting Absolutely. Um, that in the next week or so, probably not that soon, but again, I'm manifesting that there will be an announcement that Pietro staying with RLL. And speaking of RLL, um, once again, from our favorite IndyCar correspondent, Tony Donahue. Shout out, Tony. Shout out, Tony. He has posted that basically the 45 for RLL is going to the highest bidder, so the person who can bring in the most money will get that seat. Yeah, so there's been a lot of different names thrown around. So Enzo, no, Enzo's name is being thrown around for Dale Coyne. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Pietro, would if he stayed with RLL, would go to the 30 car. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yuri Vips is being thrown around. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Stingray Rob doesn't have a seat yet. He's got a lot of money. I feel like Stingray... That's true, he does have a lot of money. I like feel sponsorships. like Stingray Rob kind of gave a farewell post. Yeah. Like, not without saying a farewell post. Right. Like, could have been a farewell post. Oh, I forget. Let's look real quick. Other names thrown around for the 45 is... Uh, Yuri Vips is one of the main ones, like we said. Renus VK, Teo Porcher, and Linus. Yes. Yep. Zane, Zane Maloney was being thrown around, but he actually just signed... Uh, a seat with Formula E, mm-hmm. um, which again just kind of helps out Pietro a bit there. <laughs> Every time that one of the people gets signed at a different mm-hmm. team, I do get excited. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's so fair. Less competition. Yeah. Um, uh, before we get into the charter system, we'll explain it real quick. On Monday, when this is being posted, is when Jamie Chadwick is doing her testing. <gasps> I'm so excited. Yeah, so that'll be cool to see everything mm-hmm. that happened. She, like, posted a bunch of content about doing, like, her seat fit and everything for that. Very excited for her. Yeah, speaking of doing testing, did we already, was it, did this happen this week? What? It, it became official about Logan? No, it was last week. Oh my God, did we talk about it? Yeah. Jeez, I can't keep no, up with no, Podium I Pop. <laughs> I can't keep up with any car. Yeah. Charter system? Charter system. So, everyone knew it was coming. Yeah. Uh, but it became official this week. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let Gracie explain it a little bit. Because she understands it better than I do. It hurts my brain a little bit. I have a very basic understanding. Um, So basically is all of the teams, excluding Prema, which we'll get to that in a second. Um, IndyCar is doing a charter system, and it's each team can have up to three entries. Not all teams are having three entries because they only have two cars. Um, And all teams were approved for the charter. So like right now, how this past year... Chip Ganassi had five cars. They have to downsize to three. That's why we're seeing Linus out. That's why Marcus Armstrong switched teams to Meyer Shank. Mm-hmm. Um, I am going to be honest, I don't understand the true reasoning behind having a charter because I know charters have failed over in NASCAR. I think it's supposed to realistically level the playing field a bit. Yeah. If that happens, who knows? Yeah. But. 
So there are 27 entries allowed in an IndyCar race, and with all of the charters currently, there is 25. So for Prema, they just need to qualify for each race, and they'll be able to. But, like, for example, if Meyer Shank, I, I don't think they would, but if they brought in a third car for one of the races, like we've seen happen before with other teams, they would be basically battling for that 27 spot, kind of like they do in the 500. Mm. And this is also excluding the 500. The 500 is going to stay at 33 entries. Um, that is our very basic knowledge and understanding of it. Mm-hmm. Um, Ash Vandelay and Elizabeth, oh my gosh, I'm blanking her last name right now. They have a podcast and they explained it very well, so I would definitely recommend listening to that. Yes, go check that out. Yeah, for sure. Um, do we have any more IndyCar news before we move on? <sighs> I don't think so. All right. I think that's everything. We've gotten through any car news. I'm sure we're going to get more this week, so we'll for sure keep you updated on any news we get, especially on our socials. We usually, like, post it right away or as soon as we can once news drops, so make sure you're following us on our socials. Let's get on into Formula One. It was kind of a doozy, but we saw it coming. Yeah. It was like, everyone knew it was happening, but it still, it hit, it hit the community hard. Uh, Yeah. The community was at rock bottom, for sure. Um, So it became official on Thursday that Danny Ricardo will not be continuing with the rest of the season for Mm V-Carb. And like I said, we knew it was happening. Everyone in the paddock knew it was happening. All of the fans knew it was happening. And it still was like, it happened. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. I know. I was like still in shock. It's so, Daniel is so important to the sport and he's definitely had some faults like I've definitely disagreed with a lot of things that he said in the past yeah I am not I I don't think he's the best racer on the grid obviously that his standings talk for himself but like I do think it was done in a pretty harsh way very um and for him having such a huge impact on f1 like I do I honestly do not think that f1 would have as large of a fan base as they have now without Danny Ricardo being on the grid. Oh, absolutely not. Because it grew so much with uh, Drive to Survive on Netflix. Every, I guarantee you that, like, 90% of the people that watch Drive to Survive, if you would ask them, like, who's your favorite driver, they would have said Danny Ricardo. Yeah, for sure. Because his personality carried that show. Mm-hmm. Him and, and Gunter. And now Gunter's I gone, know, too. They're both gone. So... <clears throat> Yeah, it was done in a really shitty way. For sure. Um, you know, it, when we, other, like, great racers that have left the sport, a lot of times it's due to them retiring, and they do it at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. And they get a nice little farewell. You know, all the drivers say bye to them. They get to do their little ceremony. It's super special. They get to do sit-down interviews, all this stuff. But because Red Bull didn't, finalize anything until after everyone had already left Singapore. Yeah. There wasn't, it there wasn't, it didn't feel like there was much closure. And that didn't make sense at all um, because, well, we, Liam Lawson is taking over for the rest of mm-hmm. the season and he's just contracted through the season. So basically he needs to prove himself for 2025 in order to be re-signed. Mm-hmm. Um, but Liam came out and said that he's known for two weeks now. And I feel like that kind of goes back on what we talked about last week. The fact that we think since basically his kind of reserve contract was up with Red Bull Racing, I feel like Red Bull didn't want to lose him. We think his team came in and said, like, if you don't get him in the seat, like, you're going to lose him. And Red Bull obviously did not want to do that. It's all making sense, seeing as how Liam knew two weeks ago that he would have the seat. Um, They should have just announced it. At yeah. the beginning of the week. I mean, I don't know. A, a proper goodbye was definitely deserved for Daniel. And I saw a lot of people being like, um, Seb's retirement and Seb's, um, like, farewell was has changed the trajectory. And now, like, fans think that every driver deserves, like, a heartfelt goodbye. And it's like... There need to be, like, a award ceremony. No, but there just, needed to be some closure there. People left the paddock not even knowing if Daniel was going to be in Austin or not. There just needed to be, like, a little bit of closure. And more respect is Daniel deserved more respect than what he got mm-hmm. from 
Red Bull Racing. Yeah. Which is so uh, another kind of like slap in the face because Daniel has given so much to Red Bull Racing. Like, Absolutely. He left Red Bull, obviously. He tried out some other teams, but he came back. He was a reserve driver. He His very last thing that he ever did in Formula One was – purposely like pitting at the end of the race putting new soft tires on getting fastest lap to help out max in the driver's championship yeah so his literally like last thing that he did was still helping red Red bull Bull. Uh, and yeah i don't know he definitely deserved more it is yeah it's really sad um it was announced weirdly in the middle of the day for us so it happened do you remember what time like right around noon yeah it was like right yeah and Normally, F1 news happens, and I wake up to you it. You wake up to it, for sure. Uh, because it's normally announced around noon, like, in the UK, Yeah, uh, for the most part. So it was weird, because it would have been, like, dinner time for them. Yeah, it would have been, like, 5 p.m. Or yeah. Like, like, 5, 6, 7, if we're in Europe. Mm-hmm. And strategically, I think they did that, because all of Australia was asleep. It was like it would Australia have been around like, New Zealand. Yeah, it would have been around like midnight, eleven, one. It was <laughs> really sad, like because um, again, like then later that night when I was like going to bed, yeah, everyone was tweeting me like, "Oh no, the Australian fans are They're waking, waking up. up!" Like you could like see like a whole other wave of like shock coming through, yeah. from all the Australian fans, and um, it's just it it truly is like it, it was it it needed to happen. But I think it needed to happen either at the end of the season mm-hmm. or it needed to happen and, and they needed to give some warning, I guess. To the fans. Yeah. But Daniel definitely knew without knowing. Yeah, I wonder sure. if, like, I don't know. Because I think, like, there's there had to be, like, you can't officially tell Daniel. You can't tell him. But I'm sure Liam was like, dude. I feel like he probably did know. And couldn't say it. Yeah, and couldn't say it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Or at least maybe Which I'm just even more sad. hoping that Red Bull isn't as shitty as they seem and told him before, like, it was announced. Yeah. Well, they obviously did. Told him before, like, Monday or something. Yeah. I don't know. The other rumor was basically that mm-hmm. Daniel, or Liam, was t- taking over in, in V-Carb with Yuki mm-hmm. because Liam, they would lose Liam and he would probably sign with Sauber. Yeah. But the other rumor was that because originally... The rumors were that Checo was going to lose his seat, Daniel was going to step in, Lee was going to step in, and that was all going to happen during summer break. That obviously didn't happen. We don't know why, but we think we all know why. We all know why. Yeah. Um, so the other rumors that that was going to happen at the end of the season, that Checo was going to retire... At the Mexican Grand Prix. At, and announce it at the Mexican Grand Prix. Yeah. And then Danny was going to take over... Or Daniel or Liam or probably not, but or Yuki would take over in the Red Bull seat with Max. Yeah. Once Checo retires. But you know who was the head of those rumors? Kim. It, okay. Yes. But I kind of have a theory. Okay. I kind of have a theory. So Checo uh, today, actually, on Twitter. This was iconic. What did you you explain it? What was he it? just posted a clip of um, Leonardo DiCaprio from Wolf of Wall Street when he's like shouting like I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving over and over again, and then he said I'm sorry with a bunch of laughing, crying faces <laughs> because I, I think it was just like Friday, Saturday that these Checo retirement rumors were coming about. Mm-hmm. Um, so then he woke up this morning and said, Nah, I'm not gonna let these fly. And but that's like. Maybe he isn't retiring, but he still could be getting taken off the team. I think that that doesn't rule anything out. Because yeah. two things could happen. One, maybe he goes to the Sauber seat. Maybe. Or two, he just doesn't know yet. <laughs> like, he doesn't know he's retiring yet. Oh, maybe. And, I mean, I think it's going to be Red Bull put themselves in a good situation because... I think that it now kind of gives a very clear cut, like, Checo, you have to basically perform these next however many races there are left. How many are races? Six. 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 These next six races, you have to perform at the level that we need you to perform because if Liam or Yuki are doing great, they could take your spot. And honestly, Red Bull, again, is in a good situation because they have a 
a good group of people that could easily move into that spot. I mean, Isaac Hajar would could move into V Carb. Maybe that's why Liam wasn't announced for twenty twenty five. Oh. Oh. Ooh. You never know. You literally. You never know what Red Bull's thinking, but the thing is they, because they have two teams, basically they have two teams, and they have, like I said, good, you know, people in their driver, driver program. Mm Mm-hmm. They're in a really good spot to kind of shift around and make those decisions, and they get to make those decisions, you know, at the drop of a hat. Like, they they can do it, like, day day before the race, or not, I guess, day before the race, but day before the weekend starts. Mm -hmm. They can make those decisions. And it does kind of give them an advantage, which Zach Brown talks about a lot. A lot. He's very vocal about it. And I do agree that it's it's hard. It's another thing that would be really hard to regulate. Mm-hmm. But I do think that there are benefits for them to look into how to fix that. Yeah. Oh, my God. We missed IndyCar news. I know. Oh, my God. Were you thinking the same thing? Connects, it connects. <laughs> we were thinking the same thing. Okay. We're going to go back a little bit. So kind of keeping on topic of... Two teams kind of working together. Yeah. This is the sole speculation. Well, this isn't. It was basically announced this week that Michael Andretti is stepping down as head of Andretti uh, Global Racing. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of question marks surrounding. Like, why? Why. Um, but one theory, because Zach Brown stepped into, like, the head of, like, a, a board. I don't know what he, he, what he did. He did something with the Andretti team where he's now, like, on the board of something. And people think that Andretti did this because he thinks that it will help them get into Formula One. Mm -hmm. And they think because Michael is pretty vocal of a person, they think that that's one of the reasons why they were denied the bid. Um, So he thinks maybe if I step down, I can move into Formula Formula One. Andretti can move into Formula One. And because Zach Brown is working and helping them, all speculation helping them get into Formula One mm-hmm. that McLaren and Andretti once Andretti makes it to Formula One will have that same type like of partnership yeah. that um, Red Bull and V Carb have. I was going to have to bring that up. <laughs> That's it's so just crazy. Like, it's just kind of like if that happens, it will completely shake it up. Like because it really there there are huge benefits to it, but I do wonder if two teams are doing that, I guess four teams are doing that, Mm -hmm. they would definitely crack down. There would be much more regulations. But it sucks that Zach Brown's going to go through all that, and that's probably going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Okay, A, if anybody would do it, it would be Zach Brown. Yeah. If anybody were to be yelling about a team doing it and then being like, fuck it, I'm going to do it myself, (laughs) it would be Zach Brown. (laughs) I also was going to say, he's going to have to eat his words real hard. Yeah, no, he's really good. I mean, thankfully, anyone can, like, play it off in the media it's Zach Brown it's as well like Zach he'll Brown. be like listen you can't beat him join, join him, him. <laughs> absolutely um so that will be interesting but I do wonder if it will help Andretti get into Formula One I, know, I hope yeah. so but I also wonder what that means for the will that partnership carry over into IndyCar then with Aaron McLaren and Andretti having a partnership I think they're too I close of so. like they're I th- they're not like like points wise. Yeah, they're, they're too, too close, close yeah. points wise. I think to do that like kind of partnership. Yeah. in IndyCar, and it could be like a temporary partnership in Formula One. Like once Andretti gets on their feet, maybe. But I, I think know. in IndyCar, the thing Zach would work on the most next, besides technical alliances, would be an Indy Next team. Yeah, that's just my opinion. I would love. I would love to get that. Indy Next they, team. I think they they need an Indy Next team. Yeah. For sure. Um, well, we kind of just jumped away. We c- I completely forgot about the Michael Andretti stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we weren't totally prepared for that. We forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, everybody was just, we were like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. It came, it was, it was pretty shocking. Yeah, that was so shocking. Um, so, anyways, back to Formula, Formula One. One. <laughs> Zach Brown's very vocal about V-Carb and Red Bull working yeah. as a, working for the same goals and and Mm -hmm. and kind of using that um it is interesting though to think about because i feel like that used to be much more common like it's not like they're the only teams that still do that but like it used to be that like ferrari and like alfa romeo work together um you know mercedes yeah but like it's not like red bull and v carb yeah i guess i mean like uh mercedes and williams Mm -hmm. like had they had these like 
not like junior teams, but practically yeah. junior teams. And like everybody else kind of got away with that except for Red Bull and V Carb. Because it's Christian Horner. Yeah. I do also, again, I'm really skipping around a lot. Sorry. But. Where are you headed? I was just thinking about it because I said the words V Carb. <laughs> But, um, like, I wonder with Daniel leaving, because Daniel was a big reason that Cash App and Visa joined. Yeah, especially Visa. Um, I wonder if that's going to affect the sponsorship at all. I think it will affect the sponsor, and um, even, like, before all this happened, maybe on summer break before then, Helmut Marco was like, we've got to change this team name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's still a mouthful. It is still a mouthful, and also the fact that Yuki thought he was being signed to Red Bull when he re-signed his contract. Poor Yuki. Poor Yuki. Um, also, kind of, I'm going to circle back a bit to Red Bull stuff still. We have Helmet Marker and Christian Horner who famously mm. butt heads. And I think that, like, that adds to the rockiness of it. Someone's got to go. It's got to be Christian Horner. Yeah, it should be. But and last year, I, last year, I would have said, get rid of Helmet. Yeah. But no, okay. Hot to do something Honestly, about Christian Order. They kind of got to get rid of both of them. Yeah, they should get rid of both of them. I... Make GP team principal. Actually, no. Max would fully leave if GP was no longer. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. Um, I heard. I forget who it was. Somebody made a TikTok video. If I figure it out, I'll, I'll make sure to give him a shout out. But basically, talk about like this is one of the reasons why they think that. A lot, we get so much, like, back and forth, like, yeah. miscommunication from Red Bull. Like, yeah. an example would be the fact that, like, a couple of races ago, we thought Daniel was going to step into Red Bull, and now he doesn't have a spot even at V-Carb. And it's because we're getting, like, these, like, rumors and, like, inside scoops from, like, two different sides. And it's, it's part of it's coming from Helmet, and part of it's coming from Christian. And we, or the press, and everyone assumes that when we get, like, an inside source, it's something that... Is, is talked about and discussed fully. Everyone is on the same page, but that's yeah. obviously not the case. So I think that's why we get so many conflicting things out of the Red Bull camp because we're getting two sides of the story and they aren't, they don't agree on no. anything. They have very different visions for the team. The only thing they can agree on is that they can't lose Max. Literally. <laughs> I think also it comes out so quick and not not to say these journalists are messy in their, like, reporting, but sometimes it can get messy because these journalists will hear something from Helmet and they're like, I have to post this first so people are going to believe this the most and believe my story the most. Mm -hmm. And then, like, 20 minutes later we'll hear something, not 20 exactly, but, like, then we'll hear something that's like, well, Christian Horner said this. Yeah. So, like, there's, like, rumors that are, like, you know, the rumors Checo is going to leave the team and then that could be a very valid rumor that came from Helmet. Mm -hmm. But then Christian will go, like, to a journalist and go, I don't know where these rumors are coming from. Absolutely is he not, le like, leaving the team. Yeah. And it's like, these poor reporters are getting put through the ringer. No, they really are. And then they're they're probably getting all this backlash, like. Yeah. Which, like, they're, you'd think that, like, the the team principal and and all the helmet and Christian would both be considered reliable sources, but they obviously are not oh even God. considered a reliable source anymore. That's so funny. So, that I don't know. Too. I think it's interesting um, how much of a shit show Red Bull is right now. Yeah. Um, I don't ever want to be the type of person like I don't like seeing Red Bull. So I'm not like a fan, like a Red Bull fan. I'm like I like Red Bull, um, but. I don't ever like to say anything because, like, look at how quickly that switched up. Oh, yeah. From one season to the next, it, they Insane. went from, like... Total dominance. Total dominance. And now they are... Shambles. In shambles. Like, and, weekly. like, obviously, they're still, like, Max is still leading the driver's championship. Yeah. For now. Um, but the Constructors Cup, it, they're... We, McLaren... I said we. <laughs> we are putting in all of the effort, okay? We're McLaren, working hard. Yeah, McLaren continues to kind of pull away with the Constructors Championship, yeah. you know, each race. Um, but, like, it, things can change so quickly. Like, they really can. From, from one race to another, definitely one season to another. Um, we saw that same thing with Mercedes a couple of years ago. They were dominating, and then out of nowhere, they just couldn't keep up with the developments that Red Bull was doing. Yeah. So I don't ever like to talk about it because it could easily happen to oh, to us next. Who? Shh. Who? I'm a big Ferrari fan. <laughs> I could easily. 
Oh, I'm gonna find man. some wood to knock on after this episode. Yes. Um, speaking of though, Red Bull being in shambles. Oh. Real quick before we talk about Red Bull and shambles. Well, with all of this movement from Danny Ricardo and Liam Lawson, Isaac Ajar is now the official reserve driver for Yippee. Red Bull. So I'm excited yeah. for him. I hope he gets a seat soon. He's a great driver. He's a great driver. And you know here at Podium Pop, we are big, big supporters in bringing in more rookies. Mm-hmm. We're getting tr- we're getting a little treat next year. We're getting such a treat next year. There's still rumors that, you know, Franco's doing so good this, this yeah. season. He could possibly go to Audi for next year. Not Audi, Sauber, until it turns Audi. But mm-hmm. um, he could go to that Sauber seat because that's really the only spot that's I available. I would love to see him and Nico do some content. Oh, yeah. Oh, Nico <laughs> would, would so love good. him. Um, but that would be a, I mean, again, like all of these like rookies are like partial rookies at this point, but they're yeah. still rookies. They're, it's they're going to be their first full season. Um, so it's just, I'm, I feel like we're just getting so spoiled. I know. You know, it's kind of crazy. Who would you say... Okay, let's let's say both Liam and um, Franco get full-time seats for next year. Mm-hmm. Who would you say the, lo- the least experienced rookie is going to be? Jack, Kimmy, Liam, Ollie, Franco. I'd say Kimmy. I know, right? Absolutely Kimmy. Which is going to... I mean, Which is crazy because he's going to Mercedes. I mean, he could come out right out the gates and Cause if you do think, great, I mean, but... but it is crazy that, like, he would be the, the least experienced rookie and he's going to the highest level team yeah. out of all the rookies. Because yeah. you have Mercedes, a, a rookie at Mercedes, Haas, um, Alpine, possibly Sauber, and possibly B-carb. B-Carb. Yeah. Unless Liam somehow goes to Red Bull. But, like, yeah, all of them have some... I mean, Liam, once he finishes this, will have practically done a full close half to a full... Half, or a, a half season. Like, two, almost two half seasons, though. How many races did you do last year? Well, so this is what's actually very ironic. Last year, Liam did from Zanvoort to right before Austin. And this year, Liam is doing from Austin to the end of the year. Mm. Which, so, yeah. So, I'll have a season then. Also, technically speaking, um, Liam did Qatar last year, so he will already know Qatar. Oh, which nice. Which will be kind of nice for him. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then we have Franco, who he'll, he'll have a full half season under his belt. Yeah. Ollie's got two races in. Jack's been a reserve driver for too long. Like, too long. Which I guess Jack would be, like, the second, yeah, second so. least experience. But Jack's also been in that sim for so long, too. Yeah. I feel like he, that, that'll be... Yeah, like, actually physically driving the Formula One car, like, during a race yeah. weekend, he would definitely be second. Oh, for sure. Um, and then Kimmy, bless his heart, did one lap in a Formula One car. Because he crashed on his second lap. Bless his heart. I hope they give him another chance to get in there before next year. Oh, I feel like they for sure will. Yeah. I think they have to do another... Another rookie yeah. practice does that be, Oh, it does have to be a full other person, though. Aw, is it going to be Fred? Wait, is Fred already done one? Oh, I, I just spoke so, so quick. And I, I followed. I'm pretty sure Fred did one. I feel like they would get him in before, though. Mm-hmm. Um... Wish we could look for that. I would love to see them put Dorian in. Wow, I would love that. How much? How many do you need? How much experience do you need to do an FP one practice? Do you I need don't. Certain, a super license points? I don't think that you need a super license points to to do the practice. Really? I don't know. Well, no, because wait, does Pato have a super license? I think he did end up getting a super license, but speaking of super license points, Colton winning in Nashville got him enough super license points. Colton? He's not going to go. He's not, I think he likes IndyCar too much. Yeah. I would actually be really sad if he moved to Formula I 1. I do believe Pato has his full super license. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna like really curious. I'm going to look this up right now. I'll keep talking. Yeah, go ahead. I'll entertain them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> about those air- <laughs> airline food. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I don't know if you need a super license or not, but I am, I think it's super interesting to see what rookies they choose to put in. Um, yeah, Pato does have his FAA super license. Super license. Congrats, Pato. Speaking of Pato. Oh, yeah. Pato has been at Silverstone all this past week, um, testing. Yes. And him and Zach, Zach Brown, I... He just loves racing so much. He does. He got in the car himself and was like, I'm putting some laps. 
put some laughs in. He did a funny little TikTok. Yeah. Him and Pato. They recreated the Lando Oscar, like, jumping in, like, Oscar jumping into Lando's hand. Yeah. Um, they recreated that. That was really funny. They made it seem like Pato. <laughs> like, they made Pato go, hey, Zach, I want to recreate this. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, the social team was like, here you go. Here's your script. You need to go say this to Zach. Pato's like, like so okay, sure. Sure. Um... Yeah, no, he was testing out Silverstone. Yeah. He's obviously going to be doing FP1 in uh, Mexico in a couple of weeks. Four. Four weeks. It's the it's a weekend right after Coda. Yeah, it's a triple header. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Because it goes Coda, Mexico, Brazil. Yeah, and then it goes... And then a break. Break, and then another triple header. And then that triple header is... Uh, that triple Las header Vegas, is Vegas, Qatar, Qatar, Abu Dhabi. Which, come on, that does not make sense. Yeah, so, like, basically all the drivers are probably going to stay here, like, on this side of the world. When I say here, I mean, like, this half of the world. They're probably not going to go back to Europe. Oh, no, they'll be, they'll, yeah. I feel like most of them stay in Brazil. They do. I'm not sure how long the break is between, um, Brazil. Well, they'll probably stay in Brazil after the Brazil race, because then that's the break. Mm -hmm. Before they go to Vegas. Yeah. And there was a horrifying amount of PR last year for Vegas. Horrifying. Yeah. When, yeah. in fact, did Landon Norris sleep? I don't know. Because he was at that stupid Netflix golf thing, and then he went to, like, some autograph signing with Toomey and the suitcases. The suitcases. And then he uh, was, like, doing so many things. We really let this poor boy sleep. Um, I hope that there isn't going to be as much. I mean, it was the first yeah, year. Yeah, I get that. Uh, so hopefully it's not as strenuous okay, as it was, but who knows? Yeah, who knows? That was a circus. I cannot wait to see what happens this year. Mm-hmm. The Elvises introducing the drivers was so funny. I hated it. No, like, I hated it so bad. I hated it a lot. I giggled, though. Mm-hmm. I all admit I giggled. Um, last what? piece of Formula One news? Yeah. Um, McLaren. Oh, yes. Is getting a new sporting director in 2026, sure and that little fella... He's, he's coming from Red Bull. Chris. Once again, Red Bull and Shambles. Yep. So, uh, Will... I don't know how to say his last name. I'm not going to lie to you. Cordonay? Cordonay. Um, he is currently the chief of strategy at Red Bull. Mm-hmm. Um, is going to take a year of gardening and then for 2026 move into the sporting director role at McLaren. Yes. Um, very exciting. But some good news from this is mm-hmm. that this most likely they're... This has sparked rumors that Hannah Schmidt at Red Bull will move up into the chief of strategy role, which yeah. I, for one, I'd would love. love. That. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely love that. Um, so that's just a, a quick uh, little jump there. But it, once again, it's just like everyone jumping ship. Everyone mm-hmm. is jumping ship from Mercedes, and everyone is jumping ship from Red, Red Bull, Bull and Alpine. But, you know, that's pretty. That's a consistent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, did we miss any Formula One news? I don't believe so. I feel like this is going to kind of be what happened with summer break, that the, the first week was, like, chaotic and so much was happening. I feel like it's going to get kind of quiet after this. Yes. I, um, lost my train of thought. Okay. Must not have been very important. That's bingo for your uh, podium pop card. Gracie loses train of thought. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, Mark that space. Going. Yeah. That should be the free space, <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, another piece of news. Mm-hmm. We oh, guys. we are going to Coda. We are going to Coda. We were always planning on going to Coda, and we just never like s- did it. There was like a the trigger on point it. at ourselves. We were like, the flights there are so, so expensive, expensive. We have to give up. Yeah. And then so we were like, okay, we're giving up. We're taking the L on we'll this one. We'll take the L. We won't go to Coda. The FOMO will be insane. We'll be sad. Our friends we'll will cry. be there. We'll cry. Mm-hmm. And then we were like, I think it was literally like, the whole time in my head, I was like, I'm gonna, I need to find a way there. I need to find a way there. Yeah. I need to find a way there. And then you had texted me, I think on Tuesday, and you were like, so is Coda like fully out of the options? And I, I literally responded and said, oh, thank God you asked. Yeah. Because you made a TikTok about how you were sad about people opening their, <gasps> their wristbands. Their wristbands. I and love then a I wristband was like, ticket. Can we pull it off? And we are. We are. We're pulling it off. We're going. I'm so, so excited. I cannot wait. It's only our second Formula One race. Yeah. Which is so crazy to think about because we've gone to so many races this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's our second Formula One race. It's our first time going to Coda. 
It's only my second time in Austin. Me too. Um, so I'm super excited. We're going with our friends Ryan, um, Sarah, and Emily. Sarah mm-hmm. is Paddock Princess, and Emily is Paddock Potato, if you mm-hmm. want to go follow them on social media. Yeah. Um, so I'm super excited, but we're going to meet up with so many of our friends there, too. Oh, yeah. So if you're going to Coda, definitely let us let know, because we want to meet up with you all. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I, like, literally, like, we got the tickets, and I was like, okay, we're going to Coda. Like, cool, cool, cool. And then, like, five minutes later, it, like, hit me, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm actually going to Coda. <laughs> We're going to Coda. Um, so, if you have any, if, if any of you has gone to Coda before, definitely oh, yeah. let us know some tips, some tricks. Um, we are going to all three days. Mm-hmm. Um, something I'm personally very excited about is that I'll actually get to take my backpack in, unlike at Miami. Oh, yeah. That was I'm going to take my track pack with me. We're doing general mission, so we're, you know, if you have any good spots for us to watch the race from, or suggestions on where to sit for general admission, definitely let us know. Yeah. Um, but we're so beyond excited. I cannot wait. I have no idea what I'm going to wear. I still... feel so... Because, like, we waited so long, like, it's so close. Yeah, I feel panicked. I am a little panicked. Because, like, Miami, we got the tickets in, like, January. Yeah. So we had, like, months to prepare for Miami. Mm-hmm. And we leave for Coda in, like, three and a half weeks. Yeah. So... That's something I'm going to have to work through. I think less than three and a half weeks. The race is in three weeks. What? We will oh, yeah. leave? 20, 19 days, I think, is when we're there, getting there. 20 days? 19. 19, yeah. So, literally, yeah, three less than three weeks. We will be touching down in Austin. <sighs> it's going to be two weeks this week. Yeah. We got to figure that out. We got to stop talking. I'm gonna cry. My eyes are well. Yeah. Up. So we're really excited. I'm um, so pumped. And we will definitely do a huge recap episode after. Yeah. Um, Austin. Although expect that to be a little bit delayed. Yeah. Uh, just like the Miami one, or just like any time we come back yeah, from a race. race. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely let us know some some suggestions on where we need to get to. Yeah. Um, so since we are on a bit of a race break and IndyCar's over, um, next week, if there's no, like, huge news that we need to cover, that episode next week is going to be our, like, ranking of IndyCar races and the, um, tracks we've been to, also the biggest one, who has the best hot dog. We will be getting to the bottom of this. We're going to do our investigative journalism for you all. We will tell you who has the best hot dog at each track, for sure. Yep. Before we wrap up, yeah. I think we should do a champagne pop and a champagne problem for the week of news. We sure should. <clears throat> this can be IndyCar or Formula One, I think. Sure should. That really sure threw me for a should. Sure should. I wasn't going to say that. It's what threw me for a loop. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's start with your champagne pop mm-hmm. for the week. I'm going to give my champagne pop to Jamie Chadwick because she's going yeah. to do her first IndyCar test. Yes. Um, good luck, Jamie. Good luck, Jamie. We are rooting for you. I'm very excited to see how it goes, and that's obviously like a next step for her. So that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, Who's yours? I'm going to give mine to Liam Lawson because mm-hmm. it's been a long time coming, mm-hmm. obviously. But I'm going to give a honorable mention to our man, Tony Donahue. <gasps> Tony Donahue, Tony Donahue for sure if you gets all, a champagne pop. If you all don't follow Tony Donahue, go follow him uh, because I do trust everything that that man says. Absolutely everything. Because I feel like he's always right. He knows what he's talking about. I'm going to be honest, there hasn't been like a, a, a news piece that he's been wrong about. Yeah. That at least I've seen. Like I'm yeah. sure, but... He also was tweeting up a storm today, and it was so funny. He was tweeting up a storm. He's going back and forth with Jenna Fryer. Yeah, yeah. But no, definitely honorable mention to Tony Donahue. Mm -hmm, For sure. What about champagne problems? I mean, Daniel. Oh, I was just going to give mine to Red Bull. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, Both of those. Yeah. Maybe an honorable mention to Renus. Oh, yeah. For losing his seat with ECR. I really like Renus. I hope he can get... I can hope he... Sorry. I hope he can get a seat for Not to year. keep bringing up Pietro. Sure. But I think ideally I would love, obviously for Pietro to get the 30 car, but I'm trying to think of who I would prefer to be his teammate. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously Graham's going to be there. Um, 
I would really, I think, enjoy a Pietro Graham Renus lineup. Mm hmm. I would love that, actually. That'd be a good lineup. So, fingers crossed for you, Renus. Um, yeah. We'll keep our fingers crossed. He was funny. We met him a few times this year, and mm-hmm. he was pretty funny. Yeah. Anything else? I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you so much mm-hmm. for watching. Um, we will be back again next week. Again, anticipating doing the ranking episode for the IndyCar tracks yeah. and races. We'll do our podiums for each category. Um, but as always, make sure that you're following us because... Who knows? Something crazy could happen, and we might have to do a bonus episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we post a lot on TikTok and a lot on Instagram, so if you want to keep up with news in real time or as timely as we are able to be both working full-time jobs, yeah. make sure you're following us and um, interact with us. We love interacting with you also. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a follow if you don't. For sure. And we'll see you all next week. Bye.